Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this really cool texture atlas master material that allows you to select subtextures inside of a texture atlas uh, inside of the material editor rather than setting them up in UVs uh, in something like Maya or Blender. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is create a material. I've gone ahead and done that. It's M underscore atlas here. Uh, you can name yours whatever you want. That's just the naming convention I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in. So to start out, the first thing we need is our texture parameters. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click. I'm gonna type in texture parameter. And we want this texture sample parameter 2D. And once we click that, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'm gonna call it base color. And then I'm gonna click on this guy. And then down here where it says this uh, default texture, I'm gonna go ahead and switch that. And we're gonna go ahead and select the UV texture that comes with Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna use this UV grid SM. And the main reason for using this one is that this is a great way to visualize your material whenever you're doing anything with UVs. So I like to use it for this texture, or not this texture, but this material specifically, as I'm going to be doing a lot of UV stuff. So it really just helps me visualize as I'm building it out. So from there, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this guy. And then for this one, we're going to go ahead and do our MRA. So I'm going to type in MRA. I've made this T preview MRA texture. And I, uh, oops, <laughs> hang on. I accidentally duplicated it and didn't change the name before I changed the texture, so that changed both. So I'm going to go ahead and set this guy back to the UV. And then I'm going to duplicate this guy again. And this time, I'm going to make sure to change the name first. If you don't change the name first, like if this is base color and this is base color, and then I change one of them, it's going to change both, which threw an error there. So I'm going to change this to... MRA, so this is going to be our metallic roughness and ambient occlusion. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this to MRA and T preview MRA. Now this isn't going to come with the engine by default, but you could easily throw just a generic texture in here that's uh, set to masks or just has uh, sRGB disabled. Uh, that works too. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in. So red and metallic, uh, green roughness, and we're going to throw the blue and the ambient occlusion. All right, from there, we're going to duplicate this one more time. And we're going to call this one normal. So this is going to be our form for the uh, normal map. And then we have our T preview normal. Once again, one I built, you could use any normal though. Uh, the one thing I would recommend is if you are using preview textures for your master materials, make sure that they are very small in size. So I think these are actually like 64 by 64. Uh, this one isn't because this isn't mine, but these are and that's just because these will be referenced by all of your material instances So if you had a really large texture anytime you use that material instance Even if it's the only thing in a level you're gonna reference these textures So it's best to keep them small as it's gonna load less All right So the next step now that we've got those set up is to actually set up our UVs uh, The UVs are what's gonna control the you know actual atlas selection. So what's gonna allow us to select the top left texture or the top right or the bottom right, et cetera. So that's what we're gonna set up now. So to start out, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and hold S on the keyboard and left click. And that's gonna go ahead and create a parameter. And I'm gonna name this uh, U position. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And this one's gonna be V position. So we're gonna have one parameter for our U and one for our V. And that's so that way we can control the uh, essentially the U and the V separately. So if we wanted to go right, but stay in the top column, we could control that with the U position. If we wanted to go down, we could control that with the V position, right? Uh, the next thing we need is we need a clamp. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set a max default on this clamp uh, that's greater than one, because we're gonna need uh, a higher value than one for this, just uh, depending on how large our atlases are going to be. I don't foresee myself using any atlas that's bigger than 8x8, which would be 64 individual textures if it was 8x8, so I think that's a pretty safe bet for a max. And then the min can stay zero. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug our U into that, and then I'm going to copy that clamp, put it down here, and I'm going to plug in our V. What we're doing is we're just clamping in this, so we can't go lower than zero, and we can't go above eight. And that's just to make this break a little bit less in case uh, an artist was setting some crazy numbers. It's not going to throw everything out of whack. The next thing we need to do is actually do a seal. And all a seal does is it rounds it 
uh, is it rounds your value up to the nearest integer. And this is just to keep them from uh, setting something like 0.1 as the value. Uh, so if you typed in like 0.1 or 0.2, it's just gonna round it to one. If you typed in 1.1, it'll round it to two, et cetera. And that's just to keep it from uh, setting the tile like in between two textures. It's just gonna round it to the nearest texture rather than setting it in between. And we need to actually take these and we're gonna do a multiply for each one. And we're gonna set this into the A. We're gonna set this into the A. And then for the B, we're actually gonna make another parameter here. And we're gonna call this uh, Atlas EV tile size. Bit of a long name there, but it gets the point across. And what this is gonna be is the Atlas UV tile size is gonna be how we actually scale the UVs up and down. So this is what's gonna allow us to scale it down to the one particular texture. And then these here are what's gonna control which texture we're actually gonna look at. So we're gonna go ahead and set the default value of this to one. And we're actually gonna set the slider max to one. So the reason we set this to one is one is gonna show us the entire texture. If we see the entire texture, that's gonna be one. And then we can lower this in order to see smaller increments of the texture. So if we just wanted to see this top left corner, we would set this to a smaller size, right? Uh, but if we set it to greater than one, we're just gonna be tiling the texture more and more, which we don't necessarily need for texture atlas. We need to tile it down, but not up. So it's safe to set that slider max to one just to make sure it doesn't break. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the B and into the B. And then finally, we're gonna take these two and actually pen them together, right? And all this is doing is it's taking the individual U position and the V position that we're setting up and it's creating a UV from that. So we're creating basically a, a texture coordinate. That's the main section there for actually selecting the individual tiles that we want. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a comment, UV, position uh, selector uh, decently descriptive. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, set this to a less obnoxious color, just set it to black. Now we need to do the next section, uh, which is gonna be setting up the UV uh, size, right? So this is the UV position selection. Now we need to actually have something to set the size. And this is easier, we just need a texture coordinate. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in multiply and we're gonna plug this in the top. And for the actual thing we're gonna multiply it by, we're gonna take this Atlas UV tile size. So if we just copy this and paste it up here, if we were to change uh, Atlas UV tile size, it's not only gonna change here, but it's also gonna change here. And the reason why is we essentially want this multiply to be set the same as our tile size. And that's gonna crunch down that offset. So if these weren't separate and then you set this to the correct value and then this one was still at one, what would happen is you wouldn't be able to actually uh, select the proper tile because it would jump the entire texture. Because if this is one and then you go and change one of these, it's just gonna move it over by one, which is the entire texture. So it's gonna look like nothing changed. Uh, I find you almost never need to have this be different than this. So I just make them the same. And that's pretty much all we need to do there. We're gonna hold A for add and we're gonna plug these in together. So we're essentially adding these UVs to the others. We're gonna plug these in. So just plug this into the UV of the texture parameter. And as you can see, everything's working. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. And this guy is pretty much done. So we have our UV position selector, which is gonna allow us to select the individual sections. And then we have our texture cord here, uh, which is gonna help us select the UV tile size. So I'm gonna just go ahead and comment this guy. Or say uh, UV tile size, and I'm gonna make this black as well. Uh, I tend to make a lot of my comments black just so that way they're less obnoxious, personal preference. I'm gonna hit save once again. So I've made a material instance and I've just set it to this material and everything else should be pretty much default here. As you can see, here's our material. It looks just like the preview, all right? And we have our texture parameters here. So you could go ahead and swap out uh, the different textures uh, if you want to, but for this, just to make sure that everything's working, I'm gonna go ahead and work off of this UV grid just so I can see what I'm doing. So let's say we wanted to cut this into like four by four or just in half actually. We would wanna go ahead and set our Atlas UV tile size to let's say 0.5. And 0.5 is gonna do just that. It's gonna cut the U in half and it's gonna cut the V in half. So now we have the top left quadrant here. 
The next thing we can do is we have our U position and our V position. So this top left quadrant right now is essentially zero, zero. So if we wanted to go to, let's say one zero, which is the tile to the right, we could go ahead and set the U position to one. And as you can see, we're at one zero. If we wanted to be one, one, we could set the U and the V to one, one. And there we go, we're at one, one. And we could obviously go to zero, one as well. And that's how we select the different parts of the texture. And if you wanted to make this smaller, you could just do 0.25 instead of 0.5. So just to show you a more practical example, I've gone ahead and set up a similar material that I have over here for this plasma blast. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this material instance and then go to this material. This is pretty much the exact same setup. Nothing's really changed. The only difference here is that this is a uh, decal. So I've set it to defer decal and I've got the blend mode to modulate. And then since this is going to be for a plasma blast, I've gone ahead and added a emissive texture with a black body just so I can control that. So all we have to do is much like before, we can go ahead and just set our Atlas tile size, which will shrink it down. So in this case, since we have four textures, four quadrants rather, we need to cut it in half and then in half. So half in the U, half in the V. So we just need to set this to 0.5, which is half of one, which is the whole thing. So we set that to 0.5, now we have one, right? So in this case, it's gonna be the top left because that's zero, zero. So if I wanted, let's say the one to the right of it, I could set it to one, zero. So one in the U, zero in the V. And now I'm on the one on the right. From there, I could go ahead, give this some emissive. So I'm just gonna set this guy to like 4,000 because it's a temperature based black body. And you can see we have this really nice plasma blast. There we go. Uh, and yeah, it works pretty simple. Let's say I wanted to go to one, one, I can go to one, one and just like that. So the main reason you have something like this is let's say you had a game with, uh, you know, shooting mechanics and you had bullet decals that you had to place for hitting stone, metal, concrete, glass, whatever. You could have a texture similar to this, although it could be like an eight by eight and have different bullet damage decals. And then using a material like this, you could create a dynamic material instance in Blueprint and simply adjust these values and even do something uh, with it being random. You could plug in world position for the U and the V instead of having them be set parameters. Uh, you could add some parallax occlusion mapping, kind of whatever you want, but you could see where this is a very simple trick to allow you to uh, use less textures inside of your game, ultimately making your game smaller, reducing the number of assets, less things to load, so on and so forth. So. Hopefully this was helpful. If you liked the video, go ahead, give it a like. Uh, let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. Consider subscribing if you wanna see more. And yeah, have a nice day.